And again, our guests have been kind enough to, uh, to stay with us. Uh, from the Ohio State University, Professor Brad Bushman joins us by Skype. And we've now uh, gotten a telephone link to our right man on the left coast, James Herson. Uh, James, let's begin with you. We were having some difficulty establishing contact earlier. We traditionally hear a lot from the Hollywood community about the, the danger of the Second Amendment or firearms, but the argument has, has been reversed now concerning motion pictures, violent movies, popular culture. James, what is your take on the relationship, if any, between violent motion pictures and television shows and uh, young people committing acts of unspeakable violence like we saw in Santa Barbara last weekend? I, I think there is actually a, a load of studies, and, uh, and I'm sure Dr. Bushman will, will address this, that, that show a relationship between exposure to violent media, which includes uh, movies, television, video games in particular, and aggression that develops in later life. And it's, a lot of people didn't notice this, but in the 136-page document that Elliot Roger left, he talks about, in his words, being addicted to video game and video games, and particularly the online multiplayer game World of Warcraft. And it started it, the serious addiction, according to his words, started at age 13, just as he's going into adolescence, critical time. Age 14, he goes into high school. He writes that he withdrew further into this World of Warcraft. This is his language, uh, J.D. He says, I drowned all of my misery in my online games. World of Warcraft was the only thing I had to live for. And when he turned 19 and he moved to Santa Barbara and he, he had some disappointments, once again he plunged himself into these video games and he committed a virtual murder in this virtual world of Warcraft. He says in his words that he repeatedly took pleasure in killing as a petty form of revenge. Remember, he described the thing he was planning as the day of retribution, which sounds like a video game. And after he had this experience in World of Warcraft, he went out and acted out in real life, a series of belligerent acts. So uh, it, it's striking to me um, that also he mentions that, you know, he, he's playing this game every waking moment he gave up his homework, he gave up his friends, he gave up his life, and when he needed a new laptop, a more powerful one, his parents gave it to him. And yep. so it's, it, it's, they did not appreciate the situation he was in. I don't, you know, it's not to say that alone that video game violence caused this to happen, but it's a contributing factor and it's a warning sign. Well, certainly you can, you can point to the data that shows there's contributing factors for some of these people who have a, tr have a problem separating fiction from reality. But if you look at the Department of Justice's own numbers for juvenile arrests for violent crimes right here, you see the trend line definitely in a downward direction. So the question you have to ask here, uh, based on these numbers here, which shows the rate in 2011, the most recent numbers available, 31% below the 1980 level and 59% below the peak year of 1994. Um, of, for juvenile violent arrests here. These numbers come from the Department of Justice's own Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Program. So this would kind of debunk that, that, uh, that theory there that because oh, I don't we have think more- it does. I, I, think it, I don't think it does. We, you're talking about numbers of all juvenile arrests. No, these are specifically violent arrests for violent crimes. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about, well, all violent crime, which of course includes violence committed in robberies and things like that. We, I don't think it debunks it at all because we see a pattern, number one, we saw it in Columbine, Newtown, Connecticut. I mean, Adam Lanza had the same uh, diagnosed condition, Asperger's. He also was- But there are millions of people who play these games, games who don't commit violent crimes. But that's true. And so that's not to say that every time somebody plays a violent video game, but these addictions are serious. You know, in Asia, young, uh, men and uh, have died playing the World of Warcraft because they refuse to eat. I mean, we're talking about an extreme situation when somebody plays that excessively. And and so to say that that's the only factor, that's one thing. But to, to cite raw statistics of violent arrests, I don't see that debunking it at all because 
uh, there's a host of studies that were done with control groups and random samples over many decades that show this relationship between ad additional aggression mm -hmm. and violence that's exposed to young people for a period of years during their developmental years. And uh, I think that, you know, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Pediatric Psychiatric Association have all come to the conclusion that violent media exposure to, to, to children poses danger. Well, and we go, parents we go back need to, to be educated. May we go back to Professor Bushman for a bit? I'm curious to know, and it's a bit to expound upon what you were saying, you know, a lot of the studies also show that aggressive people are drawn to these types of aggressive games. They say a lot of, you know, females are less likely to play these, and aggressive personality types are more drawn to the more violent video games. So it becomes a chicken and egg type of thing. You know, are, do these video games cause violent behavior, or does violent behavior attract you to these sort of games? Well, maybe both, but longitudinal studies have shown that the link between exposure to violence at time one and aggression sometime later at time two is stronger than the link between aggression at time one and consumption of violent media at time two. Mm -hmm. Of course, this isn't the only factor um, that causes violent uh, behavior. Violent behavior is very complex, caused by many factors, and the, the more rare it is, like a mass shooting, uh, the, the more factors probably contribute. You know, in this case, maybe narcissism was a factor as well. You know, we know that narcissism levels are increasing. Uh, the Santa Barbara shooter seemed to have this sense of entitlement. It, he, he deserved special treatment and became angry when he didn't get the special treatment that he thought he deserved. So there are probably many factors, but violence in the media is not a trivial one. Uh, Professor, we can see behind you in your office that you, uh, I may be assuming something here, it seems you have an athletics background. You've got the Wheaties box, you've got the Iowa State wrestling, and of course you're justifiably proud of Buckeye football. And, and I'm just asking anecdotally for you, in lecturing and encountering young men on campus, have you seen a change through the years, at least in terms of interpersonal or in interaction with students? Has there has there been a change fundamentally in the male psyche? Yeah, well, it's hard to say. I really don't have any data, and I'm a scientist, so I don't like to speculate. Sure, understood. Not even anecdotal. Is there anything that happened on campus that sticks with you? And I don't mean to minimize the, the, the tangible work you do as a scientist, but is there anything you've seen on that campus, which is one of the largest in the country, that serves as a metaphor or a message for our times and what we're encountering here? Yeah, I don't know. We do know that uh, over time, narcissism levels are increasing, uh, I think. Uh, and over the same period of time, empathy levels are decreasing. Uh, that's not good when people uh, become really self-centered. I think the media contribute to that. They give uh, everybody a microphone. Uh, they can do uh, YouTube or Facebook or tweets um, uh, and project their voices to others. So, so it, it's almost like the old uh, Sly and the Family Stone song, Everybody is a Star, in terms right. of video. James Herson, our right man on the left coast, let me come back to you. I, and, and don't mean to, uh, any disrespect here, but again, motion pictures. Yes, video games part of the creative process, but what about the role of, of motion pictures and visual violence in, in television and movies? Well, you know, they're really kind of blurring together if you think about the fact that a uh, typical blockbuster summer motion picture today is CGI. A lot of people see it in 3D. It's almost modeled after a video game. It's an immersion experience. And so I, I believe that when there's ultra-violent patterns in uh, movies, that they do have an effect, and they have a detrimental effect, uh, particularly these films that the critics label as torture porn, like the Saw franchise, the Hostel franchise, these films that lack character and plots, but what they have is essentially a story of innocent people being tortured and murdered. Uh, that does not appeal to our better angels. And, and it appeals to a nihilistic worldview. And that's something very important when you look at Elliot Rodger, because in this 136 pages, there's no mention of values 
of morals, of the transcendent aspects of life that make life worth living. There's no friendship, no loyalty, no love, no God. Uh, except for he refers to himself as God. Wow. And that's the ultimate narcissism right. that Professor Bushman was referring and, to. And gentlemen, on that point of agreement, we will uh, we'll have to step away and leave it there. Brad Bushman at The Ohio State University, James Herson, our right man on the left coast. We thank you for your input uh, in, in the wake of this tragedy. Thanks very much. Your take on this troubling crime and violence, we'd love to have you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.